Payroll Schedules Payroll schedules are required in TimeTrack to publish an employee's data to a payroll provider. Employees are attached to a payroll schedule through their employee type. A payroll schedule is a required field for an employee type. They use the start of the payroll year to generate pay periods. The payroll schedule defines the length of each pay period and defines the data points to include in the payroll extract and the mapping and presentation of this data. In order to create a payroll schedule, select the Payment Schedule icon from the Administrator homepage. The Payroll ID is the code that will be used by TimeTrack to identify the payroll schedule. Description is how the payroll schedule will be referred to in TimeTrack displays. We select the facility the payroll schedule will be used in. Selection of the facility will default the facility description, payroll calendar start date and the payroll year. Payroll generation defines the duration of pay periods the schedule should use. The alternatives are weekly, every seven days from the payroll calendar start date, resulting in 52 periods per year. Bi-weekly, every 14 days from the payroll calendar start date, resulting in 26 periods per year. Monthly, using the first day and last day of the month to create 12 periods per year. The first month will be the month specified in the payroll calendar start date and semi-monthly, using the 1st and 15th of each month to create 24 periods per year. The first month will be the month specified in the payroll calendar start date. The extract structure specifies how the hours will be presented in the payroll extract. We can have a single record per employee. This structure creates one record per employee that displays clocked and attendance hours on it. Clocked hours refers to the time the employees report being at work. For a clocked employee, this is the time captured between clock in and clock out. For an elapsed employee, this is the time the employee reports working on indirect tasks and direct labour jobs. It also includes alternate hours that are not part of the normal hours collection. These include absence hours and clocked hours on a holiday. A second structure is the clocked and alternate hours. This structure creates a line in the extract for each employee that displays clocked hours. It will then create a line for each type of alternate hour the employee has incurred during the pay period. A third structure is breakdown by hours type. In this structure, each clocked hour categorization and each alternative hour code encountered will generate its own line in the extract. The hours format defines the unit of measure we use in the extract. Alternative are hours and minutes, so 7 hours and 30 minutes would read as 0730, or fraction of an hour which converts minutes into a fraction of an hour. 7 hours and 30 minutes would read as 7.5. Set fixed length to yes if the extract requires a fixed length format. When the submit net change on reprocessing extract is set to yes, you will only see the net changes when an extract is rerun. Use the extract configuration to specify which data points to include in the extract and the order in which they are to appear. The value in the position field defines the left to right order in which data points will appear in the extract. Leave a field blank to omit the data point from the extract. The text box immediately above presents a sample of the order and data points selected for the extract. After entering the configuration, select Save to create the schedule. Once the payroll schedule is saved, create the scheduled pay periods by selecting the Generate Payroll Schedules button. Select the View Calendar to see a 12-month array of the pay periods for the selected payroll year. Here we see a schedule for 2019 that starts on December 31, 2018. Each pay period is offset with an alternating visual queue. This is an example of a single record per employee structure. The extract configuration calls for employee number, regular clock towers, overtime clock towers, double time clock towers, period start date, and pay period ID. These data points will display for all employee extract records. For employees that incurred alternate hours during the period, those hours along with their associated code will display on the end of the record. The order of their display will be left to right in alphabetical order of the alternate hours code. So in this example, we have employee 30119, who's worked 21 hours and 15 minutes standard, 10 hours overtime, zero hours double time. The beginning of the pay period is 2013-02-20. The pay period ID is number eight. And then they have recorded seven hours 30, seven hours 30, and seven hours 30 against three different alternate codes. Here's an example of a clocked and alternate hours structure. The extract configuration calls for the employee number, 
regular clock towers, overtime clock towers, double time clock towers, period start date and pay period ID. These data points will display for all employee extract records. For employees that incurred alternate hours during the period, a record will be created for each alternate hour type encountered. The mapping of the alternate hours line is the same as the clock towers line. The data points employee start date and period ID display and placeholders are present to maintain the position of the clock towers. Each alternate hour line then displays the alternate hours code and hours the lines represent. The order of the alternate hour lines is in alphabetical order of the alternate hours code. So as in the previous example, this is employee 30119 with 21 15 hours standard, 10 hours overtime, zero double time, and then seven hours 30 against different alternate codes of J, P and V. When breakdown by hours type is selected, the fields in the hours code portion of the form activate. In the extract configuration portion of the form, mapping for clocked hours no longer displays. Mapping for clocked and alternate hours codes and hours is defined in the position field in the hours code section. Enter the position the hours code and hours value should take in the extract. Alternate hours will use the codes defined on their configuration forms as their hours code values. This is configured on the absence code form for absence hours. This is configured on the holidays tab of the employee type form for clocked hours on a holiday. Clocked hours will use the codes defined on the right margin of the hours code portion of the form as the hours code for each clocked hours type. Overtime before and double time before may be left blank if you have no shifts using this type of hours categorization. The sequence of data points on extract records will follow the numeric priority specified in the position field of the hours codes and extract configuration portions of the payroll schedules form. So this is an example of the breakdown by hours type structure. The extract configuration calls for employee number, hours code, hours, period start date and pay period ID. These data points will display in the same order for all hours types encountered in the pay period. Each hour type encounter will generate its own record. The primary sort of the extract is employee followed by clock towers followed by alternate hours in alphabetical order. So in this case we have clock towers of 21.25, overtime of 10 hours and alternate codes J, P and V of 7.5 hours each. When the fields of an extract require fixed length formatting, select the fixed length checkbox. The length and justify fields in the hours code and extract configuration portions of the form will activate. Select the required field length in the length column. Specify the required data position within the field in the justify field. The alternatives are left or right.